Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about common mistakes with breeding and keeping superworms. But first, I want to mention that I have a Facebook community that is slowly growing. Casey's Mealworm, Superworm, and Discoid Roach Knowledge Center. Join in on the discussion today. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. I cover a range of feeder insect content. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. Number one is temperature. Superworms should always be between 80 and 90 Fahrenheit. If their temperature gets around 60 Fahrenheit, issues can start arising. The worms will begin to drastically slow down, and unlike mealworms, they do not go into an intermittent stasis when exposed to cold temperatures for long periods of time. Superworms instead die. The more resilient superworms will begin eating the dead ones, and you may start finding worms in pieces. Having the correct temperature is absolutely vital. They need to be warm. Beetles can have similar issues. However, they are much more resistant to the cold. Under the same conditions of the worms, there was no beetle die-off outside of the ordinary. The beetles, however, did stop reproducing altogether. Keep them in a warm area. Next up is substrate. No matter what substrate you are using, you should always freeze or bake it. Grain mites are an absolute pain to deal with. Heating the substrate to around 180 to 200 Fahrenheit, which will obliterate any mite eggs, if there are any. Same goes for freezing, which is my preferred method. It's set and forget. Leave it in the freezer until you need it. With either method, your substrate should be fine. If you are using something with large pieces, like oats, beetles may lay eggs on them, potentially getting the eggs eaten or damaged by movement. Grind up your substrate if in large pieces. Next up, keeping worms with beetles. A common practice with mealworms is allowing them to all be in one enclosure, where they allow beetles to live with worms and pupa. I highly suggest against that with superworms. Superworm larvae are very thirsty and hungry animals. You will have increased odds of eggs being destroyed by small larvae, leading to a decrease in production. It takes superworm larvae around 5 months to be large enough to turn into beetles. I suggest harvesting your larvae at least once a month. Number 4, we got airflow. This is a very common problem. There needs to be a lot, and I mean a lot of airflow. The primary reason is that if you keep the lid on your enclosure and are feeding them moist food, the humidity within the enclosure can get really high, and the moisture will condense and start being absorbed by the substrate. Heat plus moisture plus food equals mold. To prevent this, I suggest removing the lid whenever there is moist food present, or not keeping a lid on the enclosure at all. They cannot escape if the walls are at least 3 to 4 inches high. If you get mold within the substrate, it should be removed completely. If you absolutely have to keep a lid on the container, make sure there are holes in the lid and outer walls of the enclosure. Again, you will need a lot of them. Number 5 is pupation. It's a common problem with people who have just started breeding superworms, is that they go out and buy them from a store and try to make them pupate right away. Using worms that have not been fed moist food can cause the pupation process to either not happen or be deadly. Superworms can go well over a month without moist food. However, when in isolation and kept that way for a few weeks, they can die, becoming a blackened hard worm. Again, superworms can go over a month without moisture. I personally think their body tries to begin to pupate and the beginning phases of it kills the worm as it doesn't have enough moisture for the process. Just an idea. So always make sure to pick fat, long superworms. I did some measurements in another video. My conclusion is anything above 4.8 millimeters wide and 1.5 to 2 inches long. Number six is keeping pupa separate. One thing I have seen a lot of people doing is piling up pupa together after pupation has occurred. The issue with this is that not all of the pupa will mature and become beetles at the same rate. Beetles are known to consume their pupa if other water sources are not available. While it isn't 100% of the time that this will happen, I did it in the past and had a few pupa die to it. It is something I suggest against. Keep them all completely separate to avoid unwanted deaths. Number seven is overfeeding, and it is a very common mistake. While it is possible to give them more than enough food to last a few days, it isn't advised. Overfeeding can easily grow mold depending on what you feed them, especially fruit that can mold fast. Veggies, however, mostly increase the humidity within the enclosure, and that can cause mold. We don't like mold. We breed insects, not mold. This ties back to ventilation. Having a lack of airflow and too much food will lead to mold. Number eight, and the last one, is feeding small larvae. You want to make sure to cover a lot of area with moist food. You want something like salad mix, lettuce, shaved carrots, shaved items in general. You want it to be spread out as evenly as possible. The idea is to allow the most larvae to get to the moist food. Moisture, early on, is absolutely vital to their growth. Otherwise, they will stay quite small. This will also help out on varied sizes of superworms and help them grow more evenly. Once they get to about medium size, this isn't an issue. 
Alright guys, that about wraps it up. If you like this video and have it in your critter loving heart, please give this video a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future like this. And as always, from the Gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.